Okay, so <clears throat> I'm here with the Dualtron Storm Limited. I just want to say how much I like this scooter. Um, if you've ridden Dualtron scooters in the past, I would say still be sure to test drive the, the Dualtron Storm Limited. I thought it was going to be uncontrollable power. Um, I did run it on eco mode. Uh, here, I ran on eco mode and I was up to gear three. Um, and then when the battery was below 50%, I, just, I went, I, I put it, I took it off of eco mode because the power was less than, right? Because there was less, less voltage. But um, for the first 50% of the battery, I kept it on eco mode and it was very smooth, very controllable. This video is meant to be about uh, the charge plugs. I just per purchased these plugs. I'll put them in the description, a link to them. This is one of the hardest things I've had with, with scooters, uh, trying to find the right plug, the name, like what plug is it? And uh, with the Wolf King GTR, most recently I could not identify the plug on there, and I also couldn't find where to buy the plug. Um, with the Dualtron Storm Limited, I was able to have someone help me identify the name of the plug, and they literally just read the, the writing that's on the plug. And I don't know how to spell that, but that it might be easier to see it on here, actually. It's the same word, C-N-L-I-N-K-O. That word is on here, on the side. And that's, when I looked that up on Amazon, it pulled up the plug. And then there's LP-16, I'm not sure if that was part of it, LP-16. But I typed in all this information on Google and on Amazon, and I was able to find the, um, the plug, which is really great. I'm really happy about that. It came, this, this, this particular one came with both sides, so if I ever wanted to change this, that's the exact same plug right there. This is there. I like that these are waterproof, they're insulated, and as Cameron, my friend Cameron, uh, YouTube channel Cam Moto, he was always talking about the dangers and the accidents that were happening when people would drop metal in there, or the water liquid would get in there. Anything that could drop in there and arc these metals together, well now these are insulated. See what they did? This is really great. I really like to see when solutions are implemented uh, for micromobility. I mean, I just can't tell you how exciting it is to see how things have progressed just in a couple of years. I mean, I, micromobility just, I think, just began in a popular way, in an exponentially popular way, in the past like six years, approximately. And, um, and I'm talking about like scooters and things like this, all these different kind of scooters and, and just how they're improving in quality and also in range, right? Quality build and range. Uh, what, the reason I chose the Jultron Storm was because of its large capacity battery and the scooter does not ride heavy, even though it has a bit, like people like a big uh, area to put your feet, well this has that and that's all battery right there. The controllers are back here. That's where the controller is, it's in the back. So they were able to designate this entire uh, area here we stand on as a battery, one enormous battery. It's a 94 volt, 45 amp hour battery. For me, I just want to see larger. I want to see 60 amp hour. I want to see 100 amp hour. I just like really big batteries. And I want to see continuing to use the highest quality cells. So in all my videos I'm sharing most recently, I'm the assumption that I'm making is that these are the best uh, cells for charge like that, that can handle the hard the highest charge rate it looked like if i just look up the name the name of the cell the model of the cell there's still choices between how fast they can be charged so if it is the best best cell it can be charged at 3.4 amps approximately 3.4 amps each cell so what that means is what i was told was by someone that knows more than me is this battery pack has nine nine batteries like nine groups of batteries in parallel now it also has a lot of batteries in series but i'm going to talk about the parallel right now because my understanding is the parallel is what determines how much amperage we can charge the battery at so each parallel set can accept uh 3.4 amps even though there's a lot of cells in a parallel set right it can be multiple cells in a in a, in a parallel set <clears throat> it still can only be charged at the maximum of 3.4 amps. Now I have to double check that because that some for some reason it seemed it would seem to me that if I have one cell in parallel, I'm sorry, if I just have one cell by itself, that would if that could take 3.4 amps. If I have two in parallel, I would just think just off of like a guessing that I could then double the amperage. But I was told that's not the case. 
if there's two cells, it remains at 3.4 amps. Now I know the voltage would stay, would have to be a specific voltage, but when you add cells, I would think the amps would be able to be increased, but this is the way it is increased. It's in the, let me think about this. Uh, I think I'm confusing myself and everyone else. My apologies. Well, at least you get to see the process of how I confuse myself. Um, let me just say it this way, the way it was said to me. Because I, I'm not actually looking at the cells in my hand. It's, they're inside the, the scooter. I was told there's nine groups of batteries in parallel. And that each group will allow me to charge at, at um, 3.4 amps. So to multiply, to multiply 3.4 amps which is the maximum that a group in parallel can be charged at, right? If there's nine groups, and I think I'm saying that correctly, nine times 3.4 is our number, which is 30.6 when I, when I multiply that. It's 30 amps and half an, just over half an amp. So 30 amps, 0.6 amps, right? 0.6 is, is like almost half of an amp. So, um, now, my thoughts are, I'm being told, and I've been told this multiple times, people with more experience than me say, well, you know, Dualtron has large wires everywhere, everything's like over-engineered, but then when it comes to the charging plugs, there's been a question of, is the wires going from the charging plugs to the BMS or to the battery, wherever they go, they probably go to both or to the BMS, I'm guessing, right, because the BMS battery management system protects the battery. To me, there should be no, these, the wires that go from this, these charge plugs to the BMS should also be over-engineered like the rest of the scooter. If I have to put larger wires in there, I will, but my request to uh, the manufacturers of the Dualtron scooters would be, whatever the capacity of the cells are, if this can, if this can be charged within spec, within specification, to 30 amps, I would think that the wires should be at least able to do that. And then it's the choice of the, the buyer, right, of the scooter owner, to, to use that higher power charge rate, which is the limit of the battery. Um, that's just the personal preference. To me, that's what that is. Now, of course, I have to watch temperature and everything, and I'm gonna, I'll do that. But um, the fact that more than one person has told me that the wires should be thick enough going from the charge ports to the the BMS into the battery, uh, it meaning I have to watch the temperature of those wires. <clears throat> if the batteries are rated for 3.4 amps each cell times nine, nine in parallel, at the meaning it can handle 30 amps, I should be able to safely charge at 30 amps, yes, at a reduced cycle life, right? Meaning the cycle life will reduce, uh, well, it's more like the capacity, the way it was explained to me was, it's not so much the cycle life as it is how much the battery will hold. Uh, so if it'll go like, let's say it goes um, 100 miles when it's new, when the battery's new, and then I'm, I'm charging it at 30 amps, let's say I charge it at 30 amps 100 times, the capacity could start to decrease and the range could decrease, right? But with that said, let's see what I have over here. This here, and this is st strictly experimental, 100%, okay? But this, I'm interested in having one of these on the, on the battery at all times. <clears throat> and you'll have to confirm for yourself if this is, you know, what this can do and everything. But I'm going to connect this to my battery as a, as a D, uh, uh, what do we call it? Uh, well, I'll call it a cycle life extender, right? Because what this does is, now we can see what it says, it charges 1 to 48 volts. This is twice that voltage. But it says are higher depending on input. It sounds like I could put a little more input than this and then be able to charge something higher, right? So if I need double the output, then maybe I need to put 30 volts in, just to guess, just guessing. So uh, um, if I have that connected to the battery, that can break those crystals up, right? And keep them really soft and not allow it to get hardened, hardened crystals at the, at the, uh, on the cells. So I am gonna planning on using that, and my research and study indicate that all batteries can have an infinite lifespan in terms of, of uh, not losing their capacity when, you, when, when properly cared for. And that does not mean slow charging, okay? 
See, the way that my brain works is when everyone says something, I don't just go, okay, that's, I accept that. What I do is I say, I, because I know we live in an infinite possibility universe and an infinite inevitability universe, and then we are the, the guardians of keeping that in a positive light, right? Because we don't want to destroy each other like we are right now with war and things, right? With death penalty and war, that's all destruction, right? That's like revenge and it's just... It's just destruction. What we need is rehabilitation, better communication. Uh, I'm not saying let people that kill people free on the street. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that killing people that have committed crimes, no matter how bad they were, it doesn't do anything to solve the problem. The problem perpetuates. So the real solution is treating everyone like one, treating everyone like, like one another, right? Like, uh, I guess we could say like family in a way. Um, so here I go again on, you know, my videos are very diverse and what we discuss and, and that's just, <laughs> that's what you're going to get on this channel. So you probably already know that anyway. Uh, so let's keep the battery alive. Let's keep humanity alive. Let's keep the planet alive and let's build a, a, a department of extraterrestrial peaceful visitation where we can actually communicate with with civilizations that are millions and billions of years more advanced than us and uh, what do you think we can learn from that I mean look look how resistant we have always been as a world to moving forward with technology but yet it's the thing that we do it's what we specialize in it's like there's a resistance to the very thing that's inevitable so what happens when we start being more supportive to that process right I think it just exponentially accelerates, but it's already doing that anyway. Everything's exponentially accelerating. Um, anyone that's afraid of weapons being used that that are too advanced, we've already had that for the past hundred years that could destroy the planet. What we're trying to do, what everyone's trying to do right now, the focus is, is trying to use technology in a peaceful way. And we do have to stop fighting each other. We absolutely must. <clears throat> There's no way to emphasize the importance of that. There's no way to, to emphasize it enough, okay, is, is that it, we have to stop fighting one another. So, yes, I will make a plug for this as well. My understanding is that these plugs only use two of the, I think we only use two of these in here, even though there's three pieces of metal in there. I think we only use two of these. So I'll double check that with a meter. I'll just test those, I'll test those and see if there's anything on all three of those, but I think it was just a plus and a minus. And I'll make sure I connect this correctly, always triple, triple checking the polarity. Now what I don't know is, I had heard something about damaging BM battery management system. I do not know if this will damage the battery management system. Um, I'm not sure if it was this that can damage the battery management system. So in other words, I might have to bypass the battery management system and go directly to the battery cells. I'm not sure if I have to do that or not. I have to check on this. I'm not sure if it was that or the Bedini, the John Bedini who I was studying his work, where you have, imagine a magnet that goes around once every 360 degrees, right? So one magnet on a wheel. And when it passes, let's say a, a large coil with a ferrous iron metal, when it passes that, where do you think it charges? Do you think the battery charges when it hits that coil? No. When it passes that coil, it's when it leaves the coil that the, that that coil gets charged up, and I think it I think it's the the heavy side component charges that coil up. Uh, something that's not acknowledged, but when you think of dark energy and dark matter, that's unaccounted for in in, in the universe. When we say dark energy and dark matter, um, my understanding is just study the heavy side component. That's it. That's dark energy, dark matter. It's 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 all of our heavy sides research. So if you want to know where energy where the energy is coming from that we that's not accounted for, uh, that's one very very popular theory, uh, and it makes sense. It makes sense when you read about it. It does seem like it's like it it really does make sense to me. Um, so anyway, um, I have to find out if I can use this through the charge ports, which probably goes to the BMS. And these this thing's going to be oscillating, right? It's the negative energy oscillator. And this will help the battery last longer, but I don't know how the, B the BMS will do with this. So if we're charging a battery with a strong magnet that passes, let's say the north side passes, I don't think it matters what side it is of the magnet, but if, we'll just say north. 
if the north side passes this one big coil and that way when the when the magnet passes that coil right the battery is charging this whole time that 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 magnet goes around and then when it comes back to the coil again it pushes against the the environment right that's the way i see it visually i just see it pushing against the heavy side component it activates it it activates that energy and then like a balloon popping inside the ocean if you put a balloon underneath the water and then you pop it and it collapses that's what the energy does to the coil it just it's, it hits the coil really hard and that when that magnet goes away from the coil that's when it's like popping the balloon in the ocean right in, deep in the ocean and the energy collapses into the coil and then that goes and charges our battery we can put that into a full wave bridge rectifier and then directly to the battery and John Benini said, "Don't even use a capacitor." He said, "Just let that pulse hit the battery really hard, and then we can, and then I think what's happening is we're shaking the electrons loose from the Dirac C, D I R A C, S E A, the Dirac C of energy, which is just everywhere. It's an ocean of electrons, and we're shaking them loose directly into the to the uh, battery cell plates. Okay, so if we were doing that on this scooter." Um, I guess the way to do that would be to have a third wheel somewhere on the scooter, right? That spring activated, it pushes down against the road on the, with a spring and just has one, literally just one big magnet, one really powerful magnet that's spun around. But I would probably do it with two magnets so that it's balanced, right? Because if we just have one magnet on a wheel, it's going to be heavy on one side and not balanced. It's going to be like vibrating. But if we have two magnets, 180 degrees away from one another, right? And, and then even maybe have two coils, that makes sense, right? So two magnets and then two coils. And when those magnets spin around and pass those two coils, and those two coils would be connected together. And I would say on, in this configuration, it would be the magnets would be set to north and south. So that way the two coils, which are connected together, I guess you maybe we'd say in series, would be being, would be being pulsed with a north and a south at the same time. And I think there's something significant there, but testing could be done where it's like the magnets could be, both be facing north, both uh, then one facing north, one facing south. And, then, and I, what I'm talking about is facing the coils, right? The north facing the coils. So both norths facing the coils. So if these are the coils and they have an iron, a ferrous metal in the middle right there, and then the powerful magnet passes by there, it would be the north pole passing that, right? And John Benini used the north pole on his. He, he used all norths all the way around. But I'm just thinking, I'm, you know, that could be done or it could be a north and a south. So, and then just see what the results are. And uh, that, that could be done two different ways. One, it could be going directly to the battery, but I think it would have to definitely go directly to the battery and not through the BMS. I think those pulses could damage the BMS, right? Just as I don't know if this oscillator, this negative energy oscillator can go through the BMS. I would think that it needs to go directly into the battery, right? So and then always and then that has to the voltage has to be monitored. This is acting as a trickle charger, but it breaks up those crystals that form right on the cells. Uh, but um, uh, this battery, I mean this bat, yeah, this battery charger we can call it a battery charger is is kind of like also a trickle charger. But we wouldn't want to let the voltage go up past what the battery limit is. So this is a ninety four a ninety four volt battery, which is ninety five volts fully charged. Um, we would not want to let it go past that. So my thoughts are if I want to charge the battery normally up to like 80% and then just leave this thing on for a while or run the battery down and let this charge the battery up over the course of like a month or two if I wasn't going to ride the scooter, right? But this breaks up those crystals. That's what this does. And that could be done with lead acid batteries and lithium batteries and all chemistry batteries. Uh, let's see, this is negative energy oscillator, 1 to 15 volts input, half an amp max, turn dial, down dial for higher voltage. I, down sounds like this to me, like this way. And that's just for higher voltage. Charge is 1 to 48 volt batteries, or higher depending on input. So now it's saying I can go higher depending on input, but never, I think never to exceed the half an amp, right? Always have output securely connected to sufficient load. And I still don't know if I damaged my, I have two of these. If I damaged my other one by connecting it to a, a, a sealed gel battery directly, right? Because it says half an amp max. Well, what happens if I connect it to a battery that has more amps available? See, that's what I don't know. Uh, but this one has never been 
this one's only been connected to a power supply that has 300 milli milliamps, less than half an amp, so that's safe. Okay, everyone, True Zero Emission signing off. Be sure to subscribe. Let's reach 20,000 subscribers as quickly as possible. And thank you for being along for the journey of my learning process and sharing with you the way that I learn. And again, I know that everyone learns faster than me. You guys are way past me. You probably already have spaceships in your backyard. Uh, I mean, I just saw a video, <clears throat> a YouTube video, where a, guy, a young man, a teenager, was saying that that these, uh, this spaceship, I'll call it a spaceship, it's a car, it's a car from the future, right? What I mean is, there's solar systems that are millions and billions of years older than ours. There's planets, Earth-like planets in the, in the galaxy that are millions and billions of years older than ours. So it's, it's very, under, it's understandable, to say the least, that life could have developed on there similar to Earth life, but just be a lot more advanced, right? So, um... There was a young man telling a story about how these beings landed in his backyard. Their, their ship was malfunctioning. It was, you know, we can call it a UFO if you want. It's their spaceship. It's their car. <laughs> it's a car that travels through space. Um, and they, he was standing face to face with them and nothing happened. They just looked at each other and then the, the being walked away or he walked, the young man walked away and, and then they fixed their craft and they left. I think that's really neat. But um, yeah, so this is, you know, the visitations are, are documented really, really, really well. Uh, humans are really good at documenting things. We document everything. So all the visitations have been documented. And the, 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 the creepy ones about like, that we hear about, those don't interest me as much as the ones about how like, how about the ones where, you know, how about all the ones where, where people from other, other planets have come here and talked to, to children? And said, you know, you guys have to stop fighting. You have to be, you have to learn to be peaceful. You, you know, you're, when you hurt someone else, you're hurting yourself. Teaching children this, right? Which, I mean, isn't that what we would do if we were advanced and didn't fight and we were traveling to different planets and that, that were destroying themselves and fighting with each other? Wouldn't we go there and say, you create the future? This is something that's very important if you want to continue to, to exist, you know. Uh, you know, it, it just makes sense. So anyway, I uh, hope you have a great day, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye, everyone.